Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I'll go ahead and admit up front and honest here, I had no expectations of this game whatsoever. I thought it was going to be pretty bad. I'm a huge fan of Rocksteady, and I thought this was going to be their first blemish, their first real miss. I love the Arkhamverse. I even love Arkham Origins. Even though I think it's the weakest of the bunch, I still think it's a great game. But everything they showed from Suicide Squad, from its marketing material to it being a live service game, just didn't look appealing to me. But I'm always open-minded and willing to be proven wrong and pleasantly surprised. But unfortunately here, the only pleasant surprise I got is that the game is short, so you don't have to suffer through the tedious grind for that long. Now, I don't think the game is great by any means, but it's not nearly as bad as everyone's saying it is. I think it's better than the Marvel's Avengers game, which I thought was a fucking dumpster fire. I think it's better than Gotham Knights, which I thought was abominable. But by no means is it a great game. At best, it's mid. And it's extremely frustrating that this game is a live service game, by the way. I'm so tired of that shit. You can't play it offline. I think they're planning on introducing an offline mode, but right now you can't just play it without an internet connection. So when I started it up last night, it crashed twice because of the server. Even though I'm not playing with anybody, I couldn't just enjoy the game without having to be perpetually fucking connected to do so. It's just nonsensical. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the real meat here. Narratively, I was actually pretty invested off rip. I think conceptually it's a really fun idea for the game, and the first half of the story I actually thought was pretty well done. The voice acting, I thought, crushed it. The characters, I thought, were enjoyable and endearing. Especially King Shark, he really felt like the main character of this game. He was the one that I played mostly, like I kind of mained Shark. You can switch around between any of the Suicide Squad members and play as them, but I really liked Shark the best out of the lineup. And in the story, he definitely shined brighter than anyone else in the crew. The writing is going to be really hit or miss depending on who you are and what really tickles you. For me, a lot of the jokes weren't landing, and that's probably, probably because the characters just never shut the fuck up. It's just this perpetual cacophony of noise as characters scramble to shout a joke every time you move in the game. There isn't a single second that passes in Suicide Squad where someone's not trying to make a quip and be quirky. And that was just a little grating to me after, like, the second hour of it. But for a lot of other people, I'm sure some of the jokes will be landing more often. It's not, like, a huge complaint. I didn't hate the writing overall. It was just too much all the time. But, like I said, narratively, I was invested in the beginning. Unfortunately, it falls off so hard in the second half. The second half just goes fucking hog wild into the stupidest ideas imaginable. It, it, I don't want to spoil anything. But the second half of this story, the tits just get blown wide open. It, it goes so cattywampus, I don't know what happened. It feels like there might have been some kind of internal panic, maybe like a crunch time, and they just felt they needed to wrap the game up as quickly and unsatisfactory as possible. Because they had set up something good. Like I said, I spent the first half enjoying the story, and the second half is a disaster. An absolute disaster. And it's made worse by the fact that this game has the most despicable boss battles I've played in a long time. The boss battles in this game are laughably pathetic. So when you're fighting the Justice League, that's not a spoiler, the name of the game is fucking Kill the Justice League, so obviously you're going to be fighting them. When you're fighting the Justice League, the boss battles are so underwhelming, I would have rather you not fight them at all and it just gives you quick time events as your fight with them. Or just give me like a fucking visual novel, a point and click, anything besides the boss battles in this game because they are trash. So let me give you an example. This was in some of the gameplay footage so it won't be a spoiler. When you're fighting the Flash, he does... Two moves. He has literally two moves that I can recall. I don't think he even has a third one. And all you do is you dodge his tornado, and then you dodge his beam, and then you counter it. And when you counter it, then you can shoot him a little bit. And you do that for like three bars of health or whatever, and then that's the end. And it's just every single time you do one of these boss battles, there's no real reward. There's no payoff. There's nothing cinematic about it. They just kind of plop over and go, Pah. Like they just plop over dead. It, it, because you, they, you found their one weakness. Enough bullets. It's so bad. I don't know how the boss battles even exist in this state. Why no one stood up and said, Listen guys, these suck. Why was there no hero at Rocksteady that said, Guys, we gotta redo these boss battles because PU, it's stinky, and all of our quality assurance testers are bored out of their minds doing these fights. And I guess to give you a little minor spoiler, but just to really drive this point home, the final boss fight, the, the boss you've been striving to fight and defeat this entire fucking game, is literally just using the exact same moveset as your first boss fight. 
He's just, it's the Flash. He uses the Flash's two moves and that's it. They couldn't even design a unique move set for the final boss that you spend fucking 10 hours grinding to get to. It's just pathetic. The boss fights are truly horrendous. Like, the bosses just aren't fun to fight or anything at all. It's just a headache. Now, let's talk about the gameplay, though. So, the gameplay I actually enjoyed quite a bit in the beginning. It's flashy, it's fast, it's fun. The movement I enjoyed the entire time. I actually think the movement from all the characters is really fun, except Harley. I didn't really like Harley Quinn's movement all that much. But the rest have really fun ways of traversing the, the world. And the gameplay I did enjoy for a time. But it becomes so repetitive by like hour four that it becomes a chore to keep doing. Now, and I don't think it's even really the gameplay's fault. I think that's the fault of the lack of enemy variety. There's only three enemies in the game, I'm pretty sure. I think there's just three. And the way you fight them doesn't change. You do the same thing for every single enemy. You don't have to fight them a special way or do anything different to beat them. You just keep pumping them full of lead, occasionally counter, and that's really it. You can melee too, but the melee is really bare bones here, unfortunately. It also doesn't help that it's the most boring enemies in gaming. It's just alien zombies that shoot. That's it. So while the gameplay was fun in the beginning, it got really tedious by, like towards the end. The combat is fast, it's flashy, and there is some fun variety to the builds that you can do because you find these different weapons that change things around, tweak things, give you modifiers, and you can do some pretty interesting stuff. But it just really loses its luster when there's nothing to really test it against because it's just the same enemies repeated over and over and over again. And you don't have to do anything really special to beat them, you just shoot them a lot and then occasionally counter when there's a blue indicator. Another thing that holds the gameplay back and makes the combat feel dull is the missions. The missions are tragic. Absolutely insulting. Because the missions are the same things over and over and over again. It's so repetitive. And God, please, heaven to, heavens to Betsy, save yourself from this game if you hate escort missions because there's so many. There's escort missions out the wazoo. I can't believe we're still getting escort missions in 2024, let alone this many. There were so many escort missions in this, I was nauseated. But even when you're not doing the boring escort missions, you're doing these fucking boring, like, tower blow-up missions. Where all you do is you kill like a group of four enemies that zap in, they phase in. You kill those four, which breaks a shield on the crystal that they're protecting. And then that crystal opens up the incubator. So then you go to the incubator and then just press square and it blows that up. Mission complete. And you'll do that like five or six times. And if it's not that mission, then it's the mission where you need to collect data. So you kill some enemies that spawn in and you get little data cards and you bring them back to your truck. And then you do that eight times and then, then 16 times and those are like that's the that's the kind of missions that you get in this and i really think it's because they needed to make that for it to work as a live service game they needed these easy simple repeatable missions in order to make these daily challenges so we keep logging in for your dailies and whatever and it sucks the missions are so bad they're so boring and it's just after the first hour of the game you have experienced every mission the game has to offer throughout the entire 9 to 10 hours of the game. In fact, the final mission leading up to the final boss is just doing the previous two missions. It super sucks. You just blow up the incubators and then you go and gather data chips and bring them back to the goober mobile and you rinse and repeat that process all the way up until you get to the final boss, which is just the copy and pasted flash move set. It is so lame and underwhelming like the combat like i said was fun for a while but it, there's just really no opportunity for it to shine when there's just nothing really new to do with it because you're doing the same shit over and over and over and over again it really is a shame because i do think there was potential with the gameplay formula i was skeptical going in that they'd make that work but they did like i actually think there was real potential with using these mechanics that they introduced for its combat but it was surrounded by like the worst design choices and just nothing to do with it at all. 
It's such a shame. And I really think it's because of this live service thing that they were forced to fucking shoehorn into the project. Now, I'm sure the project was always envisioned as a live service game, but I know this wasn't their first choice. It's very well documented. Rocksteady wanted to do other projects, but then ended up on this one. And then some of these, well, I think pretty much all of like the senior Rocksteady staff left. So it became not the project that they set out to make. And it really feels that way. So much in here feels like it was some kind of corporate decision to put it in, as opposed to, like, an actual, you know, game developer's like, this would be a good idea. It just feels like so much of this was here because it felt it needed to be for the live service model. It's just so sad. Rocksteady's games meant a lot to me, and to see them put this out just makes me upset. Because I know they can make great games. We've seen them make banger after banger. But this one... This is a clunker. It's not, again, it's not as bad as everyone is saying it is. It's just inexcusably mid. Insultingly mid. And I really get the feeling that they knew that too. Which is why they didn't send out the review codes or anything prior to launch. It, like, it just feels like they didn't have that much faith in it. And it really feels like there's blatant padding in here. Like, I can't think of an explanation for why there's so many escort missions. Everybody, every developer, every player in the world knows that escort missions are flops. Nobody likes escort missions. And there are so many in here. What a fucking fumble. What an absolute fumble. There's just no reason for that to be here other than they felt forced to put in these, like, really generic, repeatable standard missions because it's fucking live service. It just, it's it's just not, it's not great. Anyway, plugging Suicide Squad killed the Justice League into the moist meter, I'm going to have to be giving this a 45%. And I guess mid would be a 50% here, just perfectly average in the middle. But I'm giving it a little under that because the second half of the story is truly abhorrent. And the, la the second half of the game is just spammed with the worst missions the game has to offer. So it, it gets very, very, very annoying towards the end of the game here. So it's just a shame. I also do predict that this game won't be around long. It's looking like they're trying to get like 12 seasons out of the game, 12 to 13 seasons out of the live service experience here. So even when you beat the game, it's not done. I think there is a non-zero chance this game doesn't make it to 12 seasons. I think they might pull the plug on it before then, thus it would never actually be completed. And if they don't introduce the offline mode in time, you'd never be able to play it again because you'd need the online, which they, I think, would probably take off if this game doesn't sell super well. So it's just, it's just really a game that's not worth the $70 price tag right now. It certainly wasn't worth the $100 I paid to play it early for the early access to it, but anyway, that's really about it. See ya.